Howdy, today we'll be talking about enhancing student motivation in your asynchronous online classes. I am Dr. Donnelly Sullen, co-presenter is Dr. Alex Sullen. Just to tell you a little bit more about who we are as your presenters today, I am an instructional assistant professor in the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism, which is in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. I currently teach event management classes, and these can range from more introductory level to more advanced levels, particularly within our professional event management certificate. Of the classes that I teach, normally I would be instructing most of them in person, but some of them asynchronously online. I have added additional asynchronous online teaching to my repertoire and have been able to speak with my husband, who is my co-presenter, because he had had much more experience with asynchronous online instruction. And I'll let him introduce himself now. Hi, I am Dr. Alex Sullins. Currently, I am a graduate teaching assistant in the Department of Recreation, Park, and Tourism Sciences. Part of my uh, graduate program, I have taken two synchronous online courses, and I have also taught six course sections asynchronously. The target audience for this presentation is faculty who are teaching asynchronous online courses from any discipline. Since many classes were moved to an online format during the COVID-19 crisis, instructors found themselves scrambling for methods to engage students in very different setting and format. And there are also many courses that are taught asynchronously online, even in non-crisis years. So during this presentation, we will be combining our personal experiences with online teaching, as well as some training that I completed via Quality Matters online teaching certification class and the framework of the self-determination theory. So we can discuss what engagement can look like in an asynchronous course, and we'll be able to show how student agency can demonstrate learning and some of our lessons learned from moving to an online teaching format. As a result of having attended this session, attendees will be able to list one of the three elements of self-determination theory and associate intentional actions taken in course interactions with student engagement. And of course, an asynchronous format is when students are taking courses online, but there is no scheduled time the students and faculty engage in course materials simultaneously. So that creates a need for intentional actions that lead to student engagement, not just with the material, but also with the instructor and their classmates so that we can reach the best learning outcomes. So by creating cognitive, social, and teaching presence, we will have learner-to-learner, instructor-to-learner, and learner-content collaborative strategies. As for some background information about self-determination theory, it's a grand theory suggested by Ryan Adisi. It's an attempt to explain human motivation and behavior. The overarching theme within the theory is that when people have their basic psychological needs of autonomy, competency, and relatedness met during an activity, then people are more likely to thrive in their motivation and continue in the activity. However, when the needs are not met, then their motivation to continue in the activity is thwarted. So as this theory relates to student learning, students are more interested in continuing to learn and stay engaged when their basic psychological needs are met. So let's take a look at some of the recommended best practices of online teaching, as well as how to incorporate these facets of self-determination theory into the best practices. Creating assignments in a way that provides students autonomy without overwhelming them, uh, the instructor with grading woes is really important as well. So giving options and how to complete an assignment. So instead of saying, this is the one and only topic you may use for this project, you might say, here's an option if you're not able to think of some, but otherwise you're allowed to engage with topics that are more interesting to you. Um, whenever you're grading, they're still staying within that structure, but they're not necessarily all doing the exact same topic. Competency is about skill building. So for this example, consider how you use discussion posts in your course to build the skills of progressing students from understanding to application. As an assignment, discussion posts give students the opportunity to convey their understanding of a topic. By incentivizing other students to comment on their peers' posts, you can facilitate learner-to-learner -learner interactions. You as the instructor will also provide feedback in terms of guidance and direction. From here, the student can incorporate the new feedback and new understanding 
into a larger framework that's part of other projects and assignments. So general best practices with asynchronous instruction first starts with having instructor presence. So how do you make the students know that you're really there? You're not just a computer, you're a human being. Well, a great way to do that is through online discussion posts. So in the time frame that you have assigned students to complete a post, it's important that you are also engaged in those discussions as well. But you do need to strike a balance between having some presence but not being overwhelming to where the conversations can be stifled. Also creating online discussion assignments that necessitate instructor and peer feedback is important because just asking a student to provide a post response, all they're really doing is publicly responding to an assessment for your course. But if the assignment is structured in such a way that peers, as well as the instructor, as previously stated, are incentivized for providing that feedback, then it can be much more of a collaborative process requiring them to go back and have more likely real discussions. Providing weekly emails can help students stay on track. In an asynchronous course, students are often given free reign to attack the coursework at their own pace, which in some ways can be useful, but for students who don't have as much self-discipline and they're not as used to that learning environment, providing them reminders weekly that kind of anchor them to the course schedule and to the assignments that are coming up that are due can help them stay on track with their courses, but also be reminded that again, they're being taught by an actual person not just a computer. Of course, you can use your LMS tools um, to set those into motion so that you're not actually having to do them each week at a certain time, you can schedule them. But you can also use those LMS tools to identify students who are missing assignments. So if you can quickly see where students are missing assignments, you can send them a personalized message, checking in with them, saying, hey, I noticed you missed this. You know, what's going on in your life? How can I help you? How can I support you? And the earlier you do that, the better. So providing those intervention strategies shows them, again, that someone's paying attention, that there's a real human being who's the instructor in that course. And even though it's an asynchronous class, you can still assign group work, which can be an effective teaching method, even in an asynchronous setting. So using the LMS, again, to provide ways for students to connect with one another and to provide um, a time frame in which they can work together on a project and post results from that allows them to connect with their peers and see that they're not in an isolated learning environment, but they are there with other learners. And you'll see here some of the references we use that help us to get where we are. Thank you so much for listening today. We are so excited that you were able to join us on this discussion. And we hope that you have taken something away from this that you'll be able to use to engage your students in an asynchronous online learning environment.